day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm glad you're back. We wanted to sit there and do a after hour a discussion of what we did on the 28th of June. The topic that we did on the 20th of June was dealing with the fact is that uh, vain glory is it worth losing your soul. And we're talking about vain glory, the fact is that if we do things that try to please man, and we do try to create images that focus on acceptance of man, approval of man, if we do things that's uh, focus more on the will of a political party, uh, society, uh, things are just wrong. It's outside the will of God. It's called vain glory. Because you remember, whether you like it or not, and whether you believe it or not, I believe that all of us in due season, due time, will face our Creator. Uh, and those of us in Christ Jesus, uh, because we have an advocate, our, our eternal life is secured through Him. So what we talked about, though, is the fact is that with the situation going on with uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, with the situation going on with the uh, police brutality, uh, we talked about it in the Bible study. Not only the, the part about the, the vain glory, but what do Christians do when they're going to encounter uh, police brutality or encounter police and how they should uh, deal with that. And what what one of the options one of the, the members said was fight or flight. Uh, you, you fight against police brutality physically or you run in an encounter uh, with the police. Uh, but I gave a third option which is comply. And I say comply because isn't that what the will of God is supposed to want us to do? Comply. And ask questions. We're not telling you to sit there and just roll over, but ask questions if, if questions are allowed to ask. Uh, because you don't know what the situation is. You don't know how this person uh, mentality is. All I know is that person got a gun. And the best thing to do is comply. And comply as, as a Christian. Be faithful. Be used the fruits of the Spirit, which is one of them is self-control. The other part of the fruits of the Spirit is gentleness, goodness, kindness. You know, those type of things in that love, you know, joy, peace. You know, the fruits of the Spirit will help you because in, with the fruits of the Spirit, there is no love. Uh, but complying and just saying, look, here's my idea. If you ask for my idea, if you ask me to get out of the car, get out of the car. I answer your questions. And if you say, we're going to take you to jail, then, then give me, put your hands on your back and then take you to jail. But sitting there arguing with them ain't gonna do anything because as far as I'm concerned, if you got somebody who is corrupt, somebody is abusive, somebody is mentally unstable, you're, you're talking to an idiot, and the best thing to do is just comply. Because the person, we don't know, these people deal with some bad people every day. So when they come across you, they don't know what you are. They don't know what type of person you're gonna be, they don't know how you're gonna react. And I'm telling you, this happens whether you're black and white. And don't sit there and think that this is just a race issue because the history of man, if we as a society in this country uh, continue to allow somebody to be abused because of race, we need to understand that if my uh, white brethren, that if we allow abuse to occur based on race, if we think and perceive it's based on race, I can guarantee you all you're doing is opening the door for abuse to happen to you in the long run. Because we know that authorities in the past, history in the past, where persons have been persecuted, prosecuted, I mean, really prosecuted and abused uh, because of their different belief. We know in Europe, we had a caste system. We know we had the Spanish Inquisition. We know that uh, in Russia, they had Stalin killed millions of people. We, we know that uh, people have been killed, not based on the color of skin, but just based on their belief and views. So when you open the door to acceptable or wrong behavior, it's not going to stop just with a color of people. It's not. It will not. 
history, use your history. The people that were even, don't forget even Japan, uh, but in fact of their features, uh, most of them look white, right? Well, they put them in, in, uh, in camps. If, if you're brown and you know, we got people still on the border right now, packed in, the, in, the, in there, uh, in cages. Some, some of the Hispanic people are, are white complexion, some are brown complexion, or dark complexion, but it did, that color is not gonna make a difference as far as them if they think that you have a different nationality. So abuse, accepting abuse behavior only leads to more abuse to others in the long run, to all of us. So what do we do as a Christian? Because that's what the question is. And I say comply. And one of the scriptures I want to use in that, that came out of the Bible study, but I'm going to read the majority of it here, is in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 12. And I think going all the way to 12, during 19, verse 19. Uh, the subject of the title is called Suffering as a Christian. And it says right here, Beloved, think it not strange. Come on now. Concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Look at this. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of the glory of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none, listen to this now, let none of you suffer as murderers, or as thieves, or as evildoers, or as busybodies in other man's matter. In a lot of cases, when, when the police do handle you roughly, uh, abusively, or even kill you, you know one of the things they try to do is get an excuse. You resisted arrest, you, you, you did something wrong, you must be doing something wrong. Uh, and, and, and they try to make that, they, they try to say the color of your skin and say, well, you must be doing something wrong because we think proportionally all of you are bad people. See what I'm saying? They're trying to create that title that most, you know, matter of fact, you remember even when our president talked about his, his campaign opening up about the immigrant. He was talking about thieves and murderers and rapists coming. See what I'm saying? He was creating the titles that 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 falls in that category of, of, of what gives an excuse to do something wrong. And that's what the scripture said in verse 15. But let none of you suffer as murderers or as thieves or as evildoers or as or busy battles, busy bodies, and other men's matter. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come, the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keepings of their souls to him and well-doing as much as a faithful creator. The point is this, you stand in the name of Jesus. You even, you know, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't even hurt you to tell them. I don't care whether you like it or not. I, I'm a Christian, can I help you? I believe in Jesus Christ, my personal Lord and Savior. I was sitting there walking down the street. If you need something from me, I'll be glad to give it to you. You need my ID card? Here you go. If you want to put my hand on the back, here you go. God bless you. Because I'm standing on the word of God, and I believe that the devil is a liar. And I am not going to sit there and rep be represented as a thief because I'm telling you, I believe in Jesus Christ. No, I'm not stealing. No, I'm not. I'm not suspicious. I'm a believer. And the only suspicious thing you're going to find me do is say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Just stand in this organized reality. The enemy wants you to suffer and try to label you as a murderer or as a thief or an evildoer. 
Then they feel they can do anything to you. You let people know who you are in Christ Jesus. And you operate bearing the fruits of the Spirit. And let God fight your battles. Amen? That's the first part. This part A. We'll catch you in part B. But I guarantee you, let's do what Jesus did. Let's act as a Christian. And stand and let people know who you are. Preach the gospel. That's what you're called to do. So you're walking down the street. Somebody come approach you. Let them know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. God bless. And we hope you enjoy the video. Bye-bye. Okay, but even still, if, 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 and, and I, and I can't for, for the life of me imagine that if you, Pastor, were walking down the street, let's say you left, you left uh, your vehicle and was walking to a store and a cop stops you, puts his hands on you, you're just going to stop not say nothing you're not going to say why are you stopping me my question is how much when you ask the question the first time is there a problem officer if the idiot continue to just detain you just be quiet leave it wait until you get to the judge because he's probably mr think you're somebody else anyway but my point is what here's the point i'm just trying to say what is it you're going to do because if you do fight him What's going to happen? But it's not a fight. It's just inherent to to try and understand. I agree. Situation. I mean, you're just trying to understand and say, why why are you stopping me? I'm just going over here to the store. I didn't do anything wrong. Right now, my brother. And next thing you know, you're on the ground, being pummeled, or you're being slammed on the ground. Well, first of all, you. No I noticed that these punks, and that's just what they are, punks. They they're not going to just grab you by themselves. They, they're going to wait for some backup. My point is, at that time, it's like, hey, look, what? before somebody else shows up, if you don't want to answer the question, I guess I have nothing else to say. And I'll just, here, here's my, here's the hand, whatever. I, I don't know what else you're going to do. Chris, I just don't know what you're going to do. If you fight this joker, this one-on-one, he's got backups coming. And I think, Chris, that's a tactic now they have come up with anyway. I heard it. They said they do play the role of dominant. They try to dominate the situation. Overwhelm you. The gang, the gang jumping and everything, that's a new tactic that they have. Yeah, but it's more so to cover up the documentation that's taking place now. Yeah, but what I like but, about it, I like what Robinson said say they got when they that that video camera starts to run at the moment that they engage you. Yeah, but the problem is it should run the moment it is placed on their body it both when they're in the station and it should run the whole until they, they take it out return the and give it. Yeah, they wife, shouldn't have the opportunity to turn it on and off. That yeah, should yeah, not wait, be wait. a right for them. And yeah, but a point, my point I'm saying is that at least the rule is that before they even approach you, that camera's on. It's, it's supposed to be on. My point well, is- It's amazing how it always turns off and it's always not working at the opportune time. I, I want to know what I'm saying is though, is that even if you're going to die, you may die. My point is, if you show cooperate, cooperate all the way through the process, somebody else is going to jail. But they're just waiting for you to react, fight back, and then they're gonna say it was resistance of arrest. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, the guy that happened in Wendy's, what happened? Why did he get shot? Chris, why did he get shot? Cause the cop wanted to shoot him? No, no. Okay, so what did he do? That all man. I know is that dude Walking was wild calm. Black. That's all he did. Walking that wild dude black. was calm all the way up until Tell. that cop said something in his ear before yep. he got ready to put his arms behind his back. He okay. told him something. And okay. I don't know okay. what, but that brother okay. took off running. He, hey. he tried to run. Hey, hey, first of all, I want to throw two things. Chris, the reason why they try to gangbang you because they can't, can't can't constrain you by themselves. In, in that case, you saw two cops. They could not 
restrain one person. Here's the whole thing. A lot of, like you said, they're going to come swarm at you and all that. What, what's my natural response? Fight or flight. We had to voice record over this section right here, but brother made a good point. When they sit there and do that, so I got to sit here and eat a bad people. pill for that problem. Hey, look, hey, that, Chris, that's Chris. what's happening right then. Right then, you, you got to decide which pill you going to eat. But, hey, hey, Chris, what about the opposite of what Jesus? I know he died. He did die. He died on the cross. He died when they grabbed him. He, he died, you know, when they took him to Pontius Pilate and all that. He did all that stuff. Oh, I didn't have to. What? Huh? So I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, brother. But, but still, the pattern of behavior still warrants something to look at. My point is, when Christ was, I guess you call it, meek toward the whole process. He didn't say why until the man slapped him. He didn't try to answer questions until they came to send him revelation to the kingdom of God. What? If that man that got the, in Wendy and put his hand, let the man apprehend him, what would he have made at home that night? Don't or know. the next day? Don't know. I think he would have made it home. I, I'm pretty sure, I can almost bet you he would have made it home. Brother Jackson, you think he would have made it home if he had just let the man apprehend him, regardless of what he said in his ear? Yeah, he probably would have. Um, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a hypothetical, uh, but I would say I would hope that he would have. You know, right. so now in his ability to uh, de-escalate. In other words, you, you know, using that reverse psychology, irregardless as to what the officer did, irregardless as to what the officer said. Uh, hopefully, that reverse psychology would have worked, and in spite of the group of you know guys that came and, and you know jacked him up anyway um that he would have came out of it because you know they would have saw they would have seen the 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 uh the mistake and the the error of their ways exactly. but you know i mean i believe me i understand where uh brother addison and brother bassin are coming from you know i feel it i mean i, I right now as we're talking about it i feel it in my chest and i you know i wonder how difficult and it's got to be difficult to just, just take it you know um but i think that's again goes where denying ourselves. you know i think about what christ went through and 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 uh, and what the disciples themselves went through and all of these martyrs that are out there even today you know we talk about uh, you know i get this magazine voice of the martyrs and i think about what these guys go through and believe me you know these there are guys and gals who are dying every day whose names we don't know whose stories we don't know however what i'm getting from this in the spirit is that god knows God, God knows, and He is still um, glorified in it, and it's that reward. You know, when, uh, for instance, you know, God says for us to pray. You know, we go and and, and and the only person we're talking to is Him. He's the only audience. Now, to most people, that don't make no sense. You know, why don't we let somebody else see us praying? Why don't we let the whole world? Because again, the glory is not for ourselves. The glory is for Him. So even in those moments when those police officers to take it to this conversation, even those moments when those police officers are are totally wrong. I mean, we can we can we can put it all together. Totally wrong. Uh, it shouldn't be happening. Yes, I might die. Something in there says in the spirit, in the spirit. God is glorified because even unto death, we did what we were supposed to do. You know, exactly. Uh, I'm just saying uh, it. I think you said it, Chris. All I'm trying to say is the options, either we do it Christ's way, and, and you know the scripture you just read said, you read, you remember what I just, he said that the son of man is supposed to suffer, right? And I, I got brother Addison said, for us not to suffer. <laughs> but my point on it though is to look at the scripture again, let me see, make sure I get up here. I'm, I'm showing it, but the beginning of that scripture, what, what does it say, Chris? At the beginning, just that beginning. Let me, I'll, move, I'll move this out of the way. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. 
Now, I hear now. that. I understand that. But let me now let me interject this in. Remember right. that we all know that there is such a thing as a slave's Bible. Oh uh, yeah. Remember that we remember we do know that exists. Right. So why why so that that might be written from a, 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 another framework of me being a pacifist. No no no. I think I think my point I'm trying I'm to say. I'm just asking. I'm, like I said. Hey Chris, Go ahead. I'm trying to say is that at the same time, if Christ was in a situation as one person. As a man, I'm talking about the cardinal side, he had a whole bunch of people, guards, Roman soldiers, surrounding him. Uh-huh. Even if he if he fought back, he's not gonna win because the numbers is against him. Oh, Jesus. My, my point is when you when you sit there as as an individual and if you try to fight knowing that you have a disadvantage what what is it that you're trying to portray opposed to saying i'll just go strict strictly compliance At, instead of flight or fight what if it's just strictly compliance even if i have to die i mean i got beaten and, and, and knocked out killed or whatever in an apprehension in which i said nothing i said nothing the videotape showed I didn't say anything. I didn't even ask him why you even apprehended me. I'm sitting there, sitting there saying, okay, I don't know what's going on. Obviously, you got a reason for apprehending me. If you ask me a question, I'll answer your question. But you are an idiot, so I'm not going to talk too much to you. I'm not going to plead my case before you. And if I die in custody, just like that guy, Mr. Floyd, died, the impact of his death triggered a worldwide movement because he was in compliance. He may have been talking. I don't know what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Chris, he was in compliance. He was already handcuffed. They tried to sit there and say, well, he wouldn't get in the car. Okay, so he wouldn't get in the car. You're going to stay on that man's neck for eight minutes. And you're gonna tell me that, that, that part. You see what I'm saying? They, but see what I'm saying? They tried to use, they thought that would have been justifiable, but it's not. My point is if someone was have to die, which you're gonna either you're gonna die anyway, what if you die by being doing what Brother Jackson said earlier, doing it the right way? If everything, every part of that video shows that I'm in compliance, I'm not arguing with you because you're an idiot. I already recognize you're an idiot. So once I already said, why are you apprehending me? If you don't want to answer, Chris, I ain't got nothing else to say to you. Cause I already asked you my question. But if I fight, what's gonna happen? If I run, what's gonna happen? But if I stand, what's gonna happen? Even if I die, what's gonna happen in the long run? Now, how many people are going to suffer like Christ did and change the world? I'm not trying to be punk out. I'm trying because I know we, Chris, that's what I said. We talked about you before, right? I said, God needs people like I'm going out like Samson. I'm taking, I'm, I'm going out like Samson. I'm bringing the building down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how come Samson fell? Why did he look? Called that woman cut his hair. Exactly. He and he even knew that girl. He God told him not to tell that secret, right? He knew he wasn't supposed to tell where his anointing came from. But he did anyway. Mm -hmm. And he paid the price. He let some he let I guess desires or whatever cause him to lose. Because that boy took on a whole army with a jawbone. So we know he could have defended himself. Now I don't think Brother Addison, Brother Jackson, or Brother Chris has a jawbone to fight the police. No, you didn't say Johnson ain't got one, cause he got one. <laughs> hey, but, hey, hey. Yep. <laughs> hey, for those who don't know that joke, Brother Johnson, <laughs> Elder Johnson, got this big old outside in Bible. <laughs> 
<laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. We, we call that the jawbone. Yeah, right That's the jawbone. And, and, and I believe you, if he used the jawbone against the police, I think he's going to win. Me too. He, he will win. Everybody. <laughs> Oh my he will win. Can you see that, Chris? If he put somebody out in front of those people, ain't nobody gonna shoot him. That's it. And the bullet can't get through it. Can't get through it. But I guarantee you. Bulletproof. That thing is so big. <laughs> Benny Kavlar. <laughs> We got, we got, bro, Jack, we got to wrap up, but my point is, Chris, I think Jesus' way, which was compliance, even if you have to suffer, even if you have to be died, rejected, I still think it's going to make a major impact in the world. And I'm saying is that George Floyd made an impact because Brother Jackson, he was in total compliance. He had no choice, but he was in total compliance. Well, not only that, Pastor, the glory doesn't go to the individual. Come on now. The glory goes to God. And, and, and it's very easy for our flesh. Believe me, I mean, we got to remember the flesh is enmity against God. Amen. And I feel the same. Believe me, I feel, listen, guys. And I think we all kind of had the same mindset. We know we can go out there and tear up some stuff. We know that, right? Um, I'll tell you what, I'm, I, I think all three of all of us have said at some point in time in our past, it's, it's, we're lucky to be here because of some of the things that we could have done and had we got caught doing it, um, we already know the, the result of that. So in the spirit, what happens for me is I, listen, it goes against my sanity until I find peace in the spirit and I realize it's not, the glory is not for me. It is for it's God. Um, Can I ask the, this question? Hold on for a second. Remember the young lady in Columbine when that guy put that gun to her head Come and on, he brother. asked her, hey, do you believe in God? Come Knowing, on, hey, if I say yes, he gonna take me out. And she said yes. And he took yes. her out. Come now, on, brother. Watching this. Fortunately, we have a witness that can tell us that story, right? But in that moment, she wasn't looking to be glorified. She wasn't looking to be saved. She was saying, you know what? I, 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 yes, I believe in God. And boom, he took her out. And she is glorified in heaven as a result of that. And in these moments, even if we are in the dark alleys or wherever, even in the valleys, guys, now. you know, if that's what it takes, that's what we yes. got to do because God is to be glorified and it's going to take everything we got. Exactly. Everything and I, Chris, got. that's all I'm trying to say, Chris. I'm saying is, and you know, one of the part of the scripture we, we put up before was if you're going to go to battle, count the cost. If you can't, if you don't have enough sufficient army, to take the battle, you know, if, it's, if the guy got 10,000, you got 1,000, they say, go ahead and send an ambassador for peace. All I'm trying to say is, when you're in a situation where the cardinal side is against you, maybe it's better to do it God's way, Christ's way. Christ said, I'm going to die. I'm going to be rejected, but I'm not going to run and I'm not going to fight. Okay, but this guy... Yeah, that 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 uh, it's not it's not him. He he, it, he has nothing to do with it. Is just other than him being the final straw. How is it his death glorifying God? Which is one? God getting any glory out of this? Thing? Out of which one? George uh, Floyd. Floyd? Matter of fact, if you think about it, it is first of all, the whole world was walking around saying Black Lives Matter. You had ministries, you had even his funeral, they talked, they had a platform using the funeral, where you had ministers talking, you had politicians talking, uh, you had blacks and whites talking, uh, and they all could glorify God. They wow, said I, I never heard anybody. They did. Anybody, not one person, 
Not one. Glorify God they with did. this man's death. There was nothing glorifying God in this man being murdered. But see no, now, no, but no, you but there was no. That's what we need to I do. Then. Hold, hold on, hold on. The the the. I didn't understand if this man was out sharing the gospel, no. and there was video just the same way while he's sharing the gospel, and this cop comes up, arrest him, and chokes him out with his knee for for the same amount of time, six minutes, or was it eight minutes and forty six seconds? Six seconds. That would glorify God. You talking about if he was preaching the gospel? I I would say if he was just living. I'm just saying is if you, you your job your life is to preach the gospel through your actions and your deeds hey, you're, and you're, through the word of God. Okay. You, so then if, if, if you if you bear fruit, that's preaching the gospel. But what fruit did he bear of the gospel <laughs> in his death? This man right here. Just, this man did long suffering. This man did. Uh, he yeah, he. Matter of fact. He did not fuss and curse at those people. He just said, I'll get up Where and I'll get in the car. He sit there and said that, that, that uh, let me see what else he said. I can't breathe, but he called his mama. And I'm saying he should have called Jesus, but that's yeah, irrelevant yeah. to me. Yeah, but that's my point. point. He did not glorify God in it at all. I don't see, I, I know people who were not saved not say that I know for a fact, but I, you will have people who claim to be atheists cry out to God, help me, Jesus, <laughs> and, and 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 will die. And does God get the glory in that? But yeah. you know, the Bible said does that he? God, you said yeah. that God God said that all of us are made in His image. God oh. said that not even one sparrow that falls that He don't take notice of. God said that you, as an individual, not as a Christian, but as a person, has is the apple of his eye. And and the fact is that you don't think so? No. He said he no. said we're the apple I, of his I, eye. I really don't. I think because this is my point. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the offer that God has given you, if you reject his love, no, you're preaching. then how can you be the apple of his eye? Well, because now, the Bible it is his says, desire for you to be the apple of his eye. But if yes. your father is Satan, is Satan the apple of God's eye? No. We got to be careful, guys. Yes. We got to put all this in context. Listen, you know, the, uh, yeah, there you go. When, when Jesus went on the cross, remember, we were his enemies. Come all right. On. There were very few. That. There but were very until few. we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we were always his enemies. Yeah, but John right, 3, 16 right. said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He that loved what? the world. He that's, loved the that world. That's there is a qualifier. Can you pull up uh, 1 Peter 4, 16? Yes, yeah, sir. and while the, pastor's, while the pastor's doing that, the other thing is, is, you know, I think that with all of the things going on, that God hears our cries. He hears the cries of black men and women. He hears the cries of the, 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 those that are aborted. He hears the cries of, of women who are beaten and abused. He hears the cries of the individuals who are out there for, for, for uh, human trafficking. He hears the, tri the cries of the addicts. Man, he hears all of that stuff, okay? And, you know, we got to be careful trying to calculate these things in the flesh because it's, we, we can't do that. But I think what we do is we take what we've learned and, uh, and what we know and come together in the spirit and uh, and just do the right thing that's out there. I mean, we already know there's going to be some things that uh, that are going to happen that are unjust. But we can't worry about whether or not we we ourselves can make it justifiable. We just got to do what God asks us to do. Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah. Go ahead, Amen. Elder. When where it says it says, let none of you suffer for us. Uh, Four fifteen is where I'm going to start at. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him do not, not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. 